I take it back. It was not very cool back then to be African. Let's be clear. Habari Ghani tribe. Let's talk about history in the making with the Zetas. Aspen Styles Boutique is a brand that prioritizes people and the needs of children over profit. Thank you for the lovely introduction. Um, are you guys capable of saying poa? So when I, perfect. When I say sasa, you guys say poa. Sasa, poa. Mimi ni anji, mimi furaha kukutana na wewe. So hi you guys, how are you doing? My name is Angie Vigante. I am the owner of Accent Styles Boutique. All of those long words that she said just basically equates to I own a boutique in Tampa Heights. It's near Amateur Works. And a percentage of every sale goes towards an orphanage that I have in Kenya. Um, I took notes so I wouldn't ramble, right? That seems to be the, <laughs> be the key. And so yeah, at a very young age, I decided that I wanted to be like a big part of fashion. I would take permanent marker and make wing liner. Um, I would take red markers and make blush and put it on my lips. And I was always like cutting my mom's expensive bed sheets and making dresses. And no one was impressed, right? <laughs> Nobody was ever impressed by my efforts. And so um, I grew up very African-centered, wearing African clothing hearing the Swahili language. And so it's very cool to like, I take it back, it was not very cool back then to be African, let's be clear. So me wearing African dresses to school, I've never permed my hair, I've always had like big natural hair or braids, and so that was not trending, right? We didn't have the buzz language, we didn't have the social media, and we didn't have like the global acceptance where it's so cool to be black and so cool to be African back then, and so, um, it was a fight to the nail, and so my sister, um, fast forward when I got older, my sister decided she wanted to go back home and she wanted to take me with her. And so, to be completely transparent, I had no interest. I was like, I'm 21, I have a brand new Mercedes, I have a job, I have a life, I can party. There is no reason for me to go back to East Africa. And so she said, I'll pay for it. And I said, if it's free, it's for me. <laughs> so, what did your girl do? She packed her bags, all her shades, got on a plane, and landed in Kenya. And to my surprise, it absolutely blew me away, right? It wasn't the picture that I had of my parents. Um, it wasn't just like the old traditional dashiki. It was way flyer than that. They had skyscrapers, they had lights everywhere, they had nightclubs, they had uh, Mercedes. It was, it was the perfect combination of Western meets tradition. And so although it was like very traditional, it wasn't what they showed us in the textbooks, right? Mm -hmm. People didn't have their lips stretched out. People weren't living in trees. There was no huts in the, in the big city. People knew English, right? People were drinking wine. Like there was nothing bar barbaric about this country, right? And I say country because sometimes people confuse Africa as a whole as a country, um, but it's a continent. So the country of Kenya absolutely uh, blew my mind. And so today, right, I kind of want to speak to deciding, you know, making a decision if you decide to take the path of the unchosen, right? Um, so yeah, so no one in my family was necessarily a business owner. And the business owners that I've seen had never done it consistently or successfully. They either did it as a side hustle or they started and then they stopped. And so when I went to Kenya and I fell in love with the garments and the fabrics, I decided, you know, I wanted to make this a business. I decided I wanted everyone to have a piece of home. I was posting flat photos and everyone wanted uh, a t-shirt or an earring and I started to like sell it via Facebook. And so I'm getting ahead of myself a bit. So I went to Kenya, it was supposed to be two weeks. I didn't get on the plane and come back, I stayed for three years. All right, so let's start there. I decided not to come back. So I had to find a way to survive and thrive. And so I mastered the language. Within three years, I built my home. I started my business um, and I sponsored an orphanage. Um, and so while I was there, I started to create my business. I started to share 
pieces of Africa and it made me very nervous to start business full throttle. I was like, I don't have the experience, I don't have the age, which I thought equated to I didn't have the wisdom. Right, because people, you know, when you're young and you're 21 and you're starting a business or trying to do anything in 21, people tell you that you don't have the bandwidth, you don't have the capabilities. Um, people are very ages. It's not just for like older people. They do it to young people too. Um, so I really started to dig deep and I realized that I was treating my life like a business. I had already been operating as a business and so I had nieces and nephews and I was taking really good care of them and being a supportive aunt. And they're actually here in the, in the audience now. I was raising them and caring for them. And I had a mom that was always right. right? And even when I would say sorry, she would say sorry for yourself. Right? <laughs> I don't know if anyone's ever heard that. Have y'all heard that before? Right? See, sorry for yourself. And so I was like, if I can handle the kids, and if I can handle my mom, then I have great customer service. I'm <laughs> ready for business. Um, and when I was in university, and I would stay out all night, and I would party and drink, I would still wake up and make it to class. I would still be able to perform. So that tells me that I'm responsible, and I have excellent time management. <laughs> And although I look very young, right? When I was younger, I had boyfriends, right? And they were not just fine, but they were fine with an O. They were boing. <laughs> right? And when I, learned, when I met the road of boundaries, the boundaries that she talked about, um, and decided to cut them off because I realized Mr. Right was actually Mr. Wrong, I always broke it off with, it's me, not you. So that means that I can take ownership. And although this rarely happens when I'm lost for words and I don't have much to say and I'm struggling with sending a message via text, I can always pass it to my girlfriend and tell her, help me with this response. You guys ever done that? Like, girl, I don't know what to say. Take my phone and respond for me. That means that I am capable to lead and delegate responsibilities. I'm good at teamwork. <laughs> And when enough was enough in any situation, I would screenshot the messages I had sent and put it in the group chat so people could tell me if I was right or if they were wrong. And that tells me that I'm open to corrective criticism. And so I say all of this to say, right? I say all of it to say that we plan and God laughs. And so, I know that you guys see up there, many people had like several letters and degrees and beautiful, you know, things behind their name. And mine says that I'm just a small town girl from Tampa. I'm just a regular, regular, smegular girl, right? That decided to take the road of the path that people don't usually follow, the 1%, the people that decide, I want to follow my dreams. I want to go really big. I want to go hard because I can't go back home because my mom is mad that I'm in Africa for three years. <laughs> and so I figured it out. And so in the future, whether you decide to be a business owner or employee, because they are both equally as important, you are fully prepared for your future. And so when people tell you that you can't, um, I really want you guys to take their doubt and let it be your fuel. Like she said, the worst thing that you can tell someone that's super driven is that they cannot. Right? Because they are going to do everything to prove that they can. And so in this season, I want you guys just to push. I know that many of you guys are seniors. It's your last year. You pushed so far. I heard sophomores and freshmen. Just keep pushing. Right? And whatever path you decide to take, whether it's finishing, which I'm sure you guys have parents that are paying for college, so y'all got to finish. Right? <laughs> but whatever you decide, right, the path of success awaits you.